Hey y'all, Moses here. Today we're going to be covering aiming. This is a video I've been asked to make for quite some time, almost as long as I've been making videos. And I've kind of danced around the topic in other videos, but I wanted to make this one specifically about aiming, scopes, sights, some of the equipment, and uh, just a general aiming video. So that's what we're going to do. Um, before we get started, a lot of this stuff is subjective. Like a lot of my other videos, most of this is my opinions and my experience. Your opinions and your experience might differ from that, and that's totally fine. Aiming is very specific to the individual, and it is also situational in a lot of cases, especially in a game like PUBG. So before we get started, I just wanted to put that caveat on there and just say, um, Aiming is something that only comes with practice. Getting good aim requires practice. And PUBG is not a great environment in, in which you can practice because every round has different pressures. But there are ways around that and we're gonna get into that. So there are five things that I think are very important to getting uh, good aim and getting an understanding of how to aim in this game specifically and uh, some other stuff I hope you find interesting. So with that said, let's get started. The first point is having the right hardware and having it configured properly. Now I've got a little bit of footage here of some of the mice I've used in the past and the mouse I'm using currently which is the G900 uh, from Logitech. So on the left there is the Zowie FK2 uh, which is a perfect mouse if you are a claw style uh, grip like mine. Um, I would suggest if you're interested in determining your grip and finding a mouse that is in your price point and that is well reviewed. I, I suggest you check out Rocket Jump Ninja. It is a YouTube channel. Uh, the guy's name is Zai. He does reviews on all sorts of gaming peripherals, specifically mice as it relates to first person shooters. So very applicable in this case. So in the middle there is the G900, my current mouse. It's a wireless mouse. Um, I would recommend it if you've got the money. Uh, I know that a, a new one's coming out relatively soon. Um, and on the right there is the Logitech G403, which is great for palm grip. Uh, a grip I thought I was using up until I started using the G403, which I still enjoyed. Um, but essentially any mouse is, is going to do the trick as long as it is uh, right for your hand and uh, has things like selectable DPI. So um, the Zowie FK2, the G900, and the G403 are all highly reviewed mice, and I would recommend any single one of them. Uh, I typically run at 400 DPI with 50 general aiming sensitivity in PUBG and 43 uh, in my aiming sensitivity in, in PUBG. Determining your sensitivity is important. There are a lot of resources on the internet to determine your sensitivity. Um, it's a little bit of a complicated process, but once you determine your, uh, your best sensitivity, uh, it really makes uh, aiming a lot more once you have that variable set you don't have to worry about messing with with that with that specifically and you can work on uh, the the upcoming points the next point I want to talk about is understanding the gun sights and selecting the appropriate loadout the first step to improving your aim and killing efficiency is being comfortable with your selected loadout loadout preferences vary wildly among players so I won't be covering every potential gun and combination for this but I'll be using the SCAR and the UMP which are arguably the two most popular guns in the AR and SMG category respectively. Then I'll touch briefly on sniping scopes. So since I get asked this a lot let's talk about the red dot and the hollow sight. Personally I believe the red dot and hollow sight are basically interchangeable from an effectiveness standpoint but each have their own benefits. The red dot has a better field of view when aiming down the sight and the hollow sight has a very slight magnification when zoomed in with shift or in general aiming down the sight even though it's more of a closed scope type of viewpoint when using the hollow. Uh, the 2x and the hollow are very similar in that regard and even the hollow and the 2x could be interchangeable but the recoil is a little bit harder to control in full auto with the 2x so I would kind of stick to the the, the red dot or the hollow if you're in full auto um, because the, the downside to, to having that extra magnification is, is of course recoil control which I'm going to talk about next. Um, the up and the scar have identical loadout selections both can take extended mags, foregrips and muzzle attachments. As I've covered in previous videos the scar has the tightest standing spread when fully kitted compared to the other rifles so that's why I'm using it in this example. 
Uh, this means that if, uh, as you fire, bullet deviation within the cone of fire that is inherent to that rifle is the lowest. So essentially in full auto, the SCAR will fire in the smallest area around the aim point compared to all other ARs, which is a good attribute to have. Um, you can check out my advanced weapons guide for, the, uh, for more on that. Uh, but this is an, import, uh, an important feature for anyone looking to improve. Uh, even though the difference is marginal between the rifles, it could give you an advantage while you learn to control full auto recoil. Uh, recoil control is ultimately the most important aspect of sustained fire and kill speed. A player with excellent recoil control is infinitely more effective than a player with poor recoil control. So kitting your weapon for the highest recoil reduction is an effective way to rack up kills. My personal preference for ultimate recoil reduction is to use the compensator and vertical grip for muzzle and foregrip slots. But just before you start clamoring about suppressing, uh, suppressing your ump or suppressing your, uh, your scar or your, your rifle in general, the, the suppressor is a very powerful attachment with a completely different set of benefits. So for, the, for this particular example, I'm, I'm only kidding for recoil control. So we'll talk about suppressors a little down the line. Um, one note about, uh, about this loadout regarding the UMP. In the compensator and vertical grip configuration, the UMP has identical horizontal and vertical recoil speeds, which makes full auto fire very predictable to control. So the ump is a highly effective weapon up to 150 meters, but suffers from low muzzle velocity. So we'll talk about muzzle velocity a little bit further on, but having equalized vertical and horizontal recoil speeds is, is a great trait uh, to be able to practice a weapon. You don't wor have to worry about selecting the angled foregrip versus the vertical foregrip to give you a benefit based on your perception of how the weapon handles. So the ump is a, is a great tool uh, to practice your aim with. Um, so sniping and, uh, and how to be an effective sniper is for a future video. But let's quickly talk about the 4X and the 8X scopes. The 4X site is relatively complex compared to other sites in the game. Uh, there's a graphic I'm going to put up here that will help you better understand how to use the scope. Every scope in PUBG is 0 to 100 meters by default, which means if the target is closer than that, you'll have to bring the tip of the chevron lower to accurately hit where you're aiming. A lot of the time, you probably won't be, unless you're getting, unless you're getting ambushed, you're not going to be using the 4X in a, in a situation under 100 meters or if you get surprised. Um, but again, you shouldn't be using the 4X under 100 meters is what I'm trying to say. Um, the 4X is excellent because you can use the sight to zero for you with the guides below the chevron, but I'll be covering this again uh, in a future video regarding sniping. Uh, the 8X is similar to the 4X, but with a slightly different styling. Uh, the zero point is, is the center dot and increases in range in the same increments as the 4X. Uh, typically, I would recommend increasing your zero distance with the 8X if possible because it's more likely you'll be taking long range shots and have the time to adjust the zero. Um, so when using the 8X, I would just be adjusting your, uh, adjusting your zero with the page up and page down uh, buttons. So. so the next point is hitting a moving target or how to shoot at a moving target. Hitting a moving target hinges on four variables. Distance to the target, direction of the target, and speed in which it is moving, as well as the muzzle velocity of the weapon you are firing. Again, I'll be focusing specifically on the SCAR and the UMP in this portion, and we'll touch briefly on sniping. So let's start with muzzle velocity, which is a huge part of leading effectively. All of the 5.56 weapons, the SCAR, the M4, the M16, all have similar muzzle velocities, but do require some fine tuning to, uh, to your aim depending on your choice. The M16 has the highest muzzle velocity at 900 meters a second, whereas the M4 and the SCAR are trailing at 880 and 870 meters per second, respectively. The 30 uh, meters per second difference between the SCAR and the M16 is significant enough to warrant altering your lead distance slightly when shooting at a moving target. The higher the muzzle velocity, the less you should lead your target. So in most cases, the 5.56 rifles require roughly the same lead distance, at range, perhaps the M16 might require slightly less lead distance based on that advantage in muzzle velocity. The AK, however, has the slowest uh, muzzle velocity at 715 meters per second and requires significantly more lead distance to hit a moving target at the same range uh, as the other rifles. So the UMP is a different story entirely. Essentially because of its extremely low muzzle velocity at 400 meters per second, you should still not be engaging moving targets beyond 150 meters unless you're 
an ump god, in which case you don't need to need me to tell you how to use it. So, um, the ump is a is a close range weapon. You can definitely uh, plank or snipe with it, um, but with a moving target, you're better off using a regular AR. Uh, so when it comes to the target itself, distance, direction, and speed are the primary things to consider. If the target is moving left to right at 100 meters, you should be aiming to the rightmost portion of the target, with the aim point still on or just in front of the target if you're using a 5.56 weapon. If you're using the AK, you'll have to aim in front of the target to a certain degree to hit him on the move. You'll have to judge the distance by firing, as latency is a factor here as well. Uh, if the bullet strikes in front of the target, reduce your lead slightly and fire again. If the bullet strikes behind the target, increase your lead and fire again. In an ideal scenario, you will strike the target, in which case they will likely just adjust their course. So um, this is where experience and practice comes into play, as you'll have to adjust dynamically as the target runs, jumps, and changes directions. Uh, just some quick notes on this. A target running directly towards you uh, requires no lead distance. Um, so that's the same if they're running away from you. If they're running away or uh, towards you, you have to adjust either up or down um, to lead them. Uh, if they're at extreme distances, you might actually have to lead them a little bit, but uh, the chances of, of that scenario occurring are, are fairly rare, but uh, maybe it's something you can practice in a, in a custom game or with your buddies in a squad server. Uh, this will increase or decrease as they run more left or right at varying degrees. The rule of thumb is that depending on the degree of travel, move the aim point from center mass to the outside of the player as they move. So if a player starts to break left or break right, slightly increase your um, your lead on, on those either direction uh, to kind of improve your accuracy. The next point is arguably the most important, and that is practice. Practicing is the only way that you can consistently improve. Now, the only issue within this particular uh, scenario is that practicing in PUBG is kind of difficult. There's no shooting range, there's no deathmatch, there is only uh, the game itself, either squads, duos, solos. Um, the best way to practice, I believe, is to play solo and to uh, drop into the school and the military base and just get reps in, fighting players in close quarters. Um, and if you manage to get your way out of the school, I would head over to Razak and then maybe start chasing care packages. Just keep you keep putting yourself in a position to take lots of fights, and that is the best way to improve. It'll be a frustrating experience because a lot of the times, even when I'm practicing practicing in that way, I get killed a lot. So you're going to be spending a lot of time in the lobby, but that's going to be something that you're going to have to deal with, because uh, really consistency and uh, and and just persistence when it comes to practicing in this game requires a lot of patience. Um, so be patient, recognize that you're, you might not necessarily win a lot of games, but you're going to be building a foundation of skill that's going to last you uh, much longer than, you know, hiding in a cabin or trying to get to the top 10 every game. I'm not saying that those aren't viable strategies to win games, but really if you're at the end of the game and you can't win a gunfight, then, you know, your chances of winning are that much lower. Um, and within that uh, practice, I would I would like to talk briefly about positioning. Uh, another key to aiming is, is just having generally good positioning and situational awareness. So that means putting yourself in a position to maintain constant fire on a target that you can see. If you're moving right, if the, if the target is moving right to left and you're on the right side of a tree, you maybe want to move to the left side so you can maintain constant fire on them without having to reposition. So uh, or by you know LOSing yourself on, on your own cover. So um, having having little uh, situational awareness like that is is really important. Um, positioning from a high ground perspective, just generally speaking, put yourself in the best position to succeed in every gunfight. Now that's that's a very easy thing for me to say, playing this footage for you, um, but that's something that again comes with time and practice. Knowing how to engage a person is its own video, one I've made in the past. I, I think I might revisit that topic in the future. Um, but using cover effectively indoors, outdoors, wherever, and get familiar with looting, uh, using your, uh, your lean keys and um, proning and crouching and using different vantage points uh, within cities and uh, out, in the, out in the world. So um, I, hope, I hope some of what I talked about here makes sense to you. I, I, this is already running longer than I wanted to, but uh, um, I hope that some of the footage I provided, some of the examples I provided, um, uh, give you an idea as to where to start. So again, keep practicing, be patient. It only comes with time. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. 
If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up uh, and leave a comment down below with any suggestions for future content. Uh, if you dislike the video or you think I missed something, please let me know. I really, uh, I really take your guys' feedback uh, to heart. So check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash WTF Moses. Subscribe for more content like this in the future if you feel like it. And until next time, I'll see you out there.